Dear friends, greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us in the journey of hope with WYTV7. I encourage you to pray with us, support this ministry because of your faithful support. We're able to carry this gospel to those who have never heard of Christ. Thank you for praying for us, and we look forward to hear from you. You know, the Bible says, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Again, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. What is salvation? Salvation is not a creed. You say, well, I believe in the plan of salvation. You can believe the plan of salvation and go straight to hell. You're not saved by the plan of salvation. You are saved by the man of salvation. Salvation is not a creed. It's not a code. You say, well, I believe if you live right, you will go to heaven. If you could be saved by living right, then friends, Calvary was a blunder. It's not a cause, you say. I'm a member of a good church. It's not any of these things that will save you. It is Christ that saves you. Salvation is not believing something. It is receiving someone. The true gospel is the one that centers on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe not every gospel, but believe the gospel that centers on Christ. Since we are talking about Christ, did you know that Christ came to be the divine physician? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 9, verses 12 through 13. Matthew chapter 9, verses 12 through 13. We're talking about Christ came to be the divine physician. But when Jesus had heard that he said unto them, they that be hold no need for a physician, but they that are sick, but go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. There are many religions in the world that talk about their God came to save the righteous and destroy the sinners. I thank God for Christianity with all my heart. Where, it's, where I read in the Bible that Christ came to save sinners. If it wasn't for that, friends, I would not be here today. I would not be a child of king. God saved me. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I believe that we are in need of a more complete understanding of who Jesus is. And when we have that understanding, we will come to him with a complete response that, Lord, thank you for saving me. If we only have a fragment of understanding concerning who Jesus is, it follows that we can make only a fragmentary response to him. As a result of our fragmentary knowledge, many of us, many of us, we really are fractions of what you ought to be as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was concerned with the total need of humanity. Matthew tries to put the ministry of the gospel in a form of a capsule. Mark chapter 9, verse 35, we read, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. 
When we read this verse, certain great truth forced themselves into our mind. The Bible says, Jesus came about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues. Now, we're talking about Jesus as the great physician. So what does it mean teaching in synagogue? In other words, Jesus made an appeal to the minds of people. Jesus does not want you to just believe him without asking some questions. You know, it's okay to have doubt. It's okay to have concern, but bring your doubt to Christ. Jesus recognized that changes in people's basic attitude would bring them healthy actions. Christ concentrated on preaching the good news of the kingdom of God. Jesus wanted for people to know the goodness of the loving will of God. The great physician Jesus is, who was widely interested in the well-being of his people. Jesus healed every sickness. Praise God. The Bible tells us he healed every sickness and every disease among the people. By the way, some people misrepresent Christianity. They say, oh, Jesus will heal everything. Jesus will transform everything. Just come to Jesus. Well, Jesus is not a band-aid. He's not a Santa Claus. That if you just come to him, that all sickness will be gone. No. There's some sickness unto death. There's some sickness we will have as long as we live. But there's some sickness he does heal. By the way, healing is not gospel. I repeat that again. Healing is not gospel. But gospel is healing. Jesus heals. Jesus saves. Jesus redeems. There is no name under heaven above the earth whereby men can be saved apart from the name of Jesus. Jesus heals every sickness, every disease among the people. Matthew chapter 8 and chapter 9, they report to us 10 miracles that Jesus performed. Authority of Jesus is revealed over nature in those miracles. Authority of Jesus is revealed over all kinds of disease. Authority of Jesus is revealed over all kind of evil spirit. Jesus came to be the savior of all people under all circumstances. Jesus Christ is the foe of disease and pain. Let us look at the character traits of a great physician. Some physicians are famous for their bedside manners. Some physicians are famous for their technical skills. The great physician is famous for both. That is, Jesus Christ is famous for his bedside manners. He's famous for his te technical skills. Jesus was approachable. Today, many people are not approachable. You know, today, to even belong to a club or to belong to a community, to belong to a group of friends, to add value to who you are, you always have to use this word, I'm busy. Because for some reason, we think by saying I'm busy, that you try to let others know how important you are. Friends, I have a lot of work to do. But I can find the time of the day, the time in the day to do what I want. If I want to go and eat at a restaurant, no matter how busy I am, I'll find the time. If the family demands my time, I'll make the time. Jesus Christ was approachable. But all people, under all circumstances, according to Matthew chapter 8, verse 2, and in verse 16. It is true that we read that Jesus took some time to rest. Because the Bible says he was human too. Jesus Christ was 100% God and 100% human. 
Jesus' door was open to all that come at all times. He never discouraged anybody. Jesus was a specialist in all area. You know, when we talk about physicians, some are heart surgeons, some are neurosurgeons. In other words, every medical doctor is specialized in some field. Some are general physicians. But most of the time, the doctors that I know, they are specialized in one area. But Christ, he specializes in all areas. He ministered to the physical needs of the people. He ministers to the spiritual needs of the people. He ministers to the mental needs of the people. How many doctors do you know like that? Who can meet your physical need, spiritual need, and mental need? Only Jesus of Nazareth. He declared, that is Jesus. The only those who recognize the need for change of an attitude, Christ is ever present in their life. God wants to bring benefit to your life. He wants to bring benefit for your ministry. Jesus grieves that someone considers themselves to be self-righteous. That they only need for a change of environment, of change of circumstances. These people are self-righteous. It is in the area of changing the mental attitude that the great physician renders his greatest ministry. I like Paul, he said in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus ministered to the psychological and emotional needs of the people by encouraging them to have faith in God that would give them eternal peace. No matter where you go in the world, people are looking for peace. There are two countries in war. There's a peace agreement. But we find out while they're writing the peace agreement, the war still goes on. They're throwing bombs at each other. The world cannot give you peace. The only peace that surpasses all understanding comes in the name of Jesus, comes with the presence of Jesus. Friends, do you know him? Christ is a compassionate physician. He suffered with people. You know, we know a lot of physicians who are very arrogant, very prideful. We do not even feel comfortable sharing our problem with them. But I like to introduce you to the greatest physician, Christ, come to him. Jesus healed because of human need. Every person, regardless of their religion, caste, or creed, is in need of some sort of healing. Emotional, physical, financial, whatever it is, you have a need. Christ wants to heal that need. He's the great physician. But he also is able to heal because he was God in human flesh. Jesus Christ remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. The healing Christ continues to cleanse us from the leprosy of sin. One thing about lepers, most of these lepers have no feeling. You know the greatest gift we have other than salvation? The greatest gift we have is the gift of pain. Imagine if you have put your hand on a burning stove and you have no sensation on your hand, it'll burn your hand. But as soon as we put our hand on a burning stove, we remove it. Why? Because we feel the pain. The healing Christ continues to clean. He continues to cleanse, cleanse us from the leprosy of sin. 
Christ came to those who are crippled in mind. Christ came to those who are crippled in their spirit. Christ came to those who are crippled in their heart. To heal them. To heal them from their crippledness in their mind, in their spirit, and in their heart. And restores the captive. He restores the captive and he makes them free. You know, the Jesus that I'm talking about, he restores the capacity to love and hope and serve. Christ is able to release us from the paralysis caused by sin, failure, and guilt. Many people have been paralyzed because of some, some sin in their life. They've been paralyzed because of some failure in their life. They have been paralyzed because of some guilt in their life. The great physician, Jesus Christ, is able to heal you from that paralysis. The healing Christ continues to deliver from the, peop the people from the power of Satan. Not only does he cleanse us from the leprosy of sin, not only does he cleanse, uh, heals us from the paralysis that is caused by sin, failure, and guilt. He heals us from the power of Satan. Christ continues to open eyes that we might see the spiritual reality. You know, it's interesting. The Bible tells us again and again, he who hath ear, let him hear. He who hath eyes, let him see. Was he talking to the blind? No, no, no. He was talking to those who are able to see with their eyes, but not see the spiritual things. What is worse? Could be worse that one person is born blind? Was that worse? Is that the worst thing? No. The worst thing is to have sight and no vision. The Bible tells us, that he came to heal the sick. He came to save the sinners. Christ continues to open our eyes so that we can see spiritual things. Christ continues to make deaf ears hear the voice of God. Voice of conscience. Christ of distress about us. The healing Christ continues to come to those who are lame with words that can enable them to walk again. God is looking for people who are deaf, blind, and lame because he wants you to come to a personal relationship with Christ and then you can run in the power of God. The healing of Christ enables the speechless to become spokesperson of his gospel. The healing of Christ enables the speechless to become the servants of the Lord. Delivering the message of God's love happens when God heals one person who repents of his sin and asks him to heal his mind body, and soul. How can we experience the healing power of the great physician? We must remember he's compassionate. We must remember he has a loving heart. What do we need to do? We need to come to him with a trust. We need to have a spirit of cooperation and ask him, Lord, have mercy on me. Christ healed because of his divine grace and divine power. We should approach him in prayer because of his grace and power and because of our need. Jesus ministered in healing power to the prayers of those who recognize their needs and his power. Do you have a need? The power of God is able to meet that need. Are you sick emotionally? Are you sick physically? Come to Christ. Now, 
By knowing Christ, it does not exempt you from life storms. By knowing Christ, you can rest assured that in the midst of the storm, he will be your best friend, best guide, and best mediator. Jesus is the great physician. Christ always heals in response to our faith and obedience. Heal me, Lord. And you say, well, let me see if he will. No, he doesn't respond like that. He responds when you ask him in faith and in obedience. Christ always heals for the glory of God. He does not heal people for their glory. He does it so that the Father in heaven would be glorified. He not only does it for the glory of God, but he also does it for the good of humankind. I encourage us that let us seek always to glorify our God in sickness and in health. Christ Jesus came to defeat diseases and to conquer death. He could heal at a distance. He could heal in response of a person's faith for another. Let us trust him for healing our mind, our hearts, and our body. For our own hurts, Christ is the healer. For the people who are with broken hearted, Christ is the healer. Let us trust him to bring good health, healing, salvation into our lives and to those lives who never know him as their Savior and Lord. Christ is the great physician who wants to bring health, wholeness, salvation, and joy into our lives. Do you know him? You know, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, I'll come in and sup with him. You know, the Bible tells us that he knocks, but it is you who has to respond. It is you who have to open. In other words, the lock is from the inside because he's standing outside and knocking. Now, he's God. He doesn't have to knock. He can come inside a room Without knocking. We know that happened after the resurrection. When the disciples were sitting in the room. Jesus came in their midst. The Bible doesn't say that he came to the door. It says the door was closed. But Christ was inside. If he could do that. Why does he have to knock? He's given you a free will. Friends. You are free to choose. You can choose not to accept Christ and spend eternity in hell. But always know that not only are you free to choose, but along with that, remember, you are not free to choose the consequences. If you deny Christ, you spend eternity in hell without him. But if you accept him, you can rejoice with the angels in heaven. We're talking about Christ, the great physician. He's knocking on your door. He knows your condition. He knows that you're physically ill, you're mentally ill, you're emotionally ill. He knows that. Is there a hope? Yes. There's hope in the name of Jesus. If you open the door, he will come inside and sub with you. In other words, God wants to have fellowship with you. He longs to heal you. He longs to heal your scars. Do you know him? Do you know him as your savior? Do you know him as the one who heals you? I know of a lot of broken hearted people. They try to cover it with alcohol. They try to cover it with drugs. But today I tell you, friends, 
nothing can heal you except the name of Christ. It's your faith and obedience to Christ that will heal you. While we're talking about this healing that we need for our mind, for our body, for our soul. Are you in need of it today? Are you looking for someone who can heal you? Heal your family, heal your finances, heal your life. Well, Christ can do that. But more than that, he's interested in healing your soul. Jesus that I'm talking about, he's concerned about your soul because that is the only thing that is eternal that we have. Some of my friends believe that, oh, only if you receive Christ, you will live eternity in heaven. Oh, that's true. But if you don't know Christ, you will live eternity, all eternal, in hell also, if you do not know him. Just because you do not know him doesn't mean you just die and it's finished. No, no, no. If you do not know him, you die and spend eternity in hell. Through this journey of hope, our desire is that not one of you should spend eternity in hell. How can we make sure that you're on your way to heaven by doing exactly what the Bible tells us. Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Believe him for what? Believe him that he will save you. Believe him that he will heal you. Believe him that he will give you joy, peace that surpasses all understanding. He will give you joy unspeakable. He will give you life abundant. If you desire that, would you pray with us? Lord Jesus, come into my life. You know my condition. You know the sickness I'm going through. Whether it's mental, emotional, financial, spiritual. Whatever it is, I'm asking the great physician, Jesus Christ, to heal me today. Save me for all eternity. I accept you as the Lord and Savior of my life. Help me to be a great follower of you to the last day of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please contact us at Hope Givers International, P.O. Box 8808, Columbus, Georgia, 31808. Friends, we covet your prayers. We would love to hear from you. Please write to us. Please pray for us. And if possible, help us with your support. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.